Okay, I'm going to share with you um, a topic that has come up, and I'm going to share it as much from my own personal experience as I can as to not speak on anyone else's situation. Um, we label or define happiness in a way that makes sense to our minds, our understanding, what we think happiness looks like. We might see our romantic partner as that which makes us happy, but it isn't that person that makes us happy. What is it that truly makes us happy? Okay. So I'm going to speak to you about when my relationship ended, um, I was uh, in a lot of despair. I was as upset, as sad, as distraught as I have ever been. And um, I had to really do a deep dive into what I thought that I was getting out of that relationship because I don't think I was seeing clearly. And why I say that is because there had been several instances of problematic occurrences with, within that relationship while it was active. And, you know, I got very good at not looking at the issues more so. I got very good at being willing to tolerate unacceptable behavior in a way. Um, I got very good at making excuses for the person that I loved. I got very good at being accepting and tolerant of things when he did them that I would never be accepting and tolerant of with others. Okay. Um, so when that relationship ended, I had to take a step back and look at what it is that I really wanted for a time. I thought it was him that I wanted. I thought I wanted him. I just wanted him. Okay. I wanted him the way I wanted him though. There's that. So when I really looked at it, here's, here's what I now understand. I wanted a loving, reciprocal, nurturing, uplifting relationship. I wanted a partner that could give me what I needed and I wanted to be that for him. Okay, that was what I wanted. When I seriously took a look at the relationship, that's not what was happening. Okay. And I must speak about some of these things. We oftentimes will put labels on our romantic partner as that is the person that makes me happy. And we might really enjoy that person's company. And that is a wonderful thing. We might really enjoy that person's company. That's great. Okay. But there is a danger of sorts in thinking that someone else makes us happy. We must be happy, we must make ourselves happy. And if they align with that also, then this is a very good thing. What does this look like? In a relationship, if, if it feels good for you to give that person affection, give that person time and attention, give that person, even if it's just in text messages, even if it's just whatever, if that makes you feel good, then that is good to do. If it is fulfilling and, and feels loving to you. If we are doing those things, but the real desire is to hear from that person, to get a response, to engage in a conversation, then that is not the right reason to do it. 
um, unless the message clearly says, I would like to have a conversation with you. That is authentic. So this video comes back to the importance of being centered in self, being truly authentic, living our true selves lives. Okay. That means, that means if, if I want to go kayaking, I invite the person that I know is going to make my kayaking experience even more enjoyable because I love sharing company with this person while doing this activity. All right. <clears throat> Instead of inviting the person that really wants to go with me, whose feelings I don't want to hurt, okay? Unless that person is the same person that I get great joy out of kayaking with, I need to invite the person that I really enjoy kayaking with. Even if that hurts the other person's feelings, because that is being authentic and true to myself. And it is not fair to the other person to invite them along for anything that is not going to be super, super enjoyable to me because that's not real. It's fake. It's fake, right? Unless, of course, having their company is more enjoyable than doing the activity myself. And sometimes that is the case, all right? I once had a friend we didn't really do anything together but go to bars. And I loved dancing. I wasn't a drinker, but I loved dancing. She liked to drink and stuff, and she liked to dance. And so it worked out for both of us because it gave me a buddy to go dancing. I didn't need anybody to dance with me on a dance floor. I could do that all by myself. But it gave me a buddy to, you know, have there with me to feel more secure as a, as a woman in that environment to not be there alone. Okay. So it gave me someone to pal around with, and it was an activity that we both enjoyed. So, but we weren't really friends in other ways. We didn't do other activities together and that was okay because we both got what we, what we needed out of that. We both got what we wanted out of those experiences. So it was okay. Um, so it was more about the activities and less about who we were doing it with. Okay. Now, when it comes to romantic relationships, you know, this is where we have to really focus in on what it is that we need individually. A lot of times we try to figure out, especially as women, I can't speak for you guys because I don't know that, but I know for us women, what we do is we try to figure out what he is thinking, what he means by this, that, or the other, right? Um, <clears throat> instead of focusing back in on ourselves and, well, what does this feel like for me? Missy, are you having a good time right now? Missy, does this feel good for you? And if it doesn't, what do you want to do about that? What do you want to do with it? Here's where you are, okay? What this does in living our true authentic selves is gives every person that is in our lives the opportunity to do the same. We are focused on our needs and what we need at this. So that doesn't mean that we manipulate or connive or any of these things to get what we want. That's not what this is about. This is focusing in on who we truly are, what we truly need, and that which is loving for ourselves. Because it should also be loving to everyone else. And if it's, if it's not, we need to look at that and where we may have gone a little awry, okay? So there, there are ways to, to follow our highest path with the least amount of fallout to those around us. Okay. Keep in mind the fallout would occur anyway. If a person is living their highest path, the path of their true selves, whatever negativity may come down the pipe from that would have occurred no matter what. Eventually. 
It may have taken longer, but it would have happened, okay? Because that which is not right is not right. Meaning that which is not right or for our highest good eventually becomes obvious. Sometimes it just takes longer, all right? So, I mean, I look back at my relationship and I'll come back to my example on this. There were several instances when my mind wanted to be out of that relationship, when my fear, my fear response was triggered so heavily um, that I really wanted to be done way before we were actually done. Okay. Um, and I marveled oftentimes that my heart just wasn't in it. My heart just wasn't in it in the giving up on the relationship, letting go of the relationship. Eventually, that is what happened. And eventually, my all was in alignment with it, conditionally, okay? So my all came into alignment in saying, okay, this is not meeting my needs and this is what I need. And either you be that for me, with me, or you don't. And here's where we are. And either way, it's okay. Either way, you know, it is fine. But this is what I need. So, you know, it gave him the opportunity to be him. And it gave me the opportunity to be me and to really focus in on what I desire in a romantic relationship. The other thing is, uh, we as women, sometimes we tend to overreach, uh, some might say chase. We like to dote lovingly on the object of our affection. Mm -hmm. uh, what this does sometimes, uh, someone said to me that, uh, someone that I love quite dearly, she said to me, I feel like I'm a burden to her romantic partner. I feel like I'm a burden. And I said, okay, well, let's look at that. What are you doing that you feel is burdensome toward your partner? What are you doing that feels, that makes you feel like you are being a burden on your partner? And so then she shared with me what that was. And I said, so stop doing it. So stop doing it and then see what happens. So when we take a step back, we allow the other people or persons in our lives to show us who they are. Oftentimes we think that they are all of the wonderful things that it is that we desire for our partner or from a partner, right? And we never really give them the opportunity to prove us right or wrong. We just imbue them with these attributes that they may or may not have. And then, you know, eventually the day comes and those, they can't really live up to those expectations because maybe they never were there to begin with. We just imagine that they were. And the, here's why that happens. We created the label that says, you're my guy, you're my girl, you're that that makes me happy. Okay. And what happens is then in us, because we have given them that label, we give them all of the characteristics of the person that makes us happy. Do you understand? So even though they may not have those characteristics, we've given it to them by giving them the label of that which makes us happy. So they have now become all of those things which are enjoyable to us. <laughs> so this is... This happens in the world a lot. This is the power of suggestion at its highest influence. So I give you the label that means you are my this. So I'm giving you a label of what you are in relativity to me. And because I've done that now, I also have given you all of the qualities of that person. Even if on a mental level, I don't even know what that is. Some aspect of me knows exactly what is perfect for me and I'm giving it to you. All of those things you just are. 
all of those things you just are so it's being a human is is you know human beings are amazing creatures and we are very lovable and we are we can be playful and we can be all these wonderful things and we so desperately want to shower our love onto those closest to us right but what this does is it makes it more important to us the importance is on showering the love onto this person more importantly than it is to actually see that person as they are where they are all right now that person always has the opportunity to be their authentic true selves and to show up as themselves but oftentimes what happens is many people try very hard to fit into the box that we have created for them okay and some people create boxes for themselves and they work their whole lives very diligently to be what they think they're supposed to be okay so this is kind of a natural thing that happens with humans it is kind of a natural thing it is only when we really, really start to get in touch with who we are, and this is being, again, centered in self, why this is even more important, to be able to have enough personal power to not deviate from who we are, even when we know that the person talking to us wants us to be something else. Because for many, they will just become that thing. They will become whatever it is that person wants them to be. Because they don't have enough self-awareness. They don't have enough... Mm, it is self-awareness, but there was something, something more to it. Hmm. Kind of like self-identity. But self-identity gets a bad gets a bad rap here. But it is, right? They don't have enough strength of self to not become what others want them to be. They many people don't have enough um they don't feel they're worth enough to be their authentic selves because they don't know themselves as the Christ, the divine point of attention of God that they are. It is really important because each of us is a divine point of attention of God. The lens through which we see is very special and specific to our point of attention. And that is perfect. It is perfect because that allows for 800 quadrillion or more experiences that then God or source or the all gets to experience through our experiencing of it. Um, the whole idea of God being able to know itself, his self, herself, through us having the experiences. Those of us who said, yes, I'll go. I'll go have this experience. Yes, I'll go. I think that sounds like it could be fun. Let's do that thing, right? We came here joyfully to have these experiences, though we may not remember it. We were excited and we were joyful about it. And even after this life experience and we leave this body and go on to the next experience, I hear it told that we can't wait to come back. And, and uh, I'm not so sure that that's on the agenda for me. <laughs> this time has been one that I'm like, you know what? I think I've had it. I think this has been enough. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> 
So, but once I leave this body, all things, those things change and who the heck knows. So, so again, this is about the labels that we apply to the different things in our world and how very influential those labels can be. Um, some, I didn't have this experience, but some people do. So, you know, their children, they, they, the children, even in the womb, the parents already seem to know how these children are going to be before they're even born. Okay, I'll share that real quickly. My daughter is now 23 years old, and when she was very young, oh, very young, but not that young. So she was a teenager, right? She was probably 15 and uh, thinking about college and thinking about what she was going to do with her life and whatever. And she said to me, she said, Mom, how did you think I was going to be? Who did you think I was going to be? Did you think I'd be like this? Do you think, did you think I would like this thing? And, and I just looked at her and I said, what? And she said, well, yeah, what did you think I was going to be like? And I said, I didn't have any idea what you were going to be like. She got very angry at me. <laughs> she got very angry at me because I guess some of her friends had parents who had plotted their whole lives for them. Their parents had plotted their whole lives and they already knew what kind of college they wanted them to go to, what kind of field they wanted them to get their college degree in, um, what kind of job they wanted them to have, what kind of family, grandchildren they wanted them to create for them, like this whole thing. And I did not do that. But she was upset at me because I had not done that. And I said, Brina, I had no idea who you were going to be. You are going to be the person you choose to be. You know, my job is not to tell you who you're going to be. My job is to protect you, to keep you fed, to keep you clothed, to provide you shelter and support and affection. My job is not to dictate who you are. My job is to love you, no matter what. And so it's really funny because, again, you see how these labels, and even sometimes the lack of them, can cause disruption in the psyche of the human, right? So um, I have always been very proud of my daughter. I've always been very proud of her resilience, her ability to adapt to any situation, um, her ability to analyze her way through a problem, her ability to see, to see, even if it's after the fact, how it played out that way to her benefit. These are wonderful gifts that she has. And, and, you know, she has turned out to be a very wonderful adult. So, you know, I often said to my child that she made me look very good because she got very good grades and she did not get into trouble. And she was a good kid as far as that goes. We never had any issues with trouble. Um, and she made me look good and I knew I could not take credit for it, you know, but that is something that happens in the world. I, I've had many people over the years tell me, you know, that by looking at my daughter, they knew I was a good person because she turned out to be so good. And, and that really isn't so as a parent, as a parent, we can provide an example we can do the best we can by our children, but they ultimately get to choose who they are going to be. That They ultimately get to choose who they're going to be. Okay? I am the oldest of four children who grew up in the same house, and we are all different. I mean, 
we are all different. How does that happen? It happens because we choose who we are. We choose who we want to be in this moment, in this experience, in every, every opportunity that is the now. We get to choose that. Um, and so when we are in the world, you know, Christ taught us, Jesus taught us, to be in the world, but not of it. These labels are of the world and we must be very careful. We must be very careful to believe that our minds know what is best for us, that our minds know what happiness looks like. They don't. Okay. They don't. When we desire a thing, going to use the relationship as, as the example. I know that my father, God source, the creator of all has made available to me because he provides for my every need and want and joy that all of those things are given to me right now. I only need choose it. I only need choose it. And what does it mean to choose that? It means to align yourself with it, okay? How do you do that? Well, the first thing is to understand that you have no idea what that is. You have no idea what is right for you. You have no idea what is the best thing for you. You have no idea what is happy for you because everything you know, everything you think you know is of the mind. And that doesn't know a thing. It only thinks. Okay. So the first thing we do is we say, I choose to have a romantic, balanced, nurturing, loving, reciprocal relationship with, in my case, it would be with a loving, romantic partner that is male that I find sexy, intelligent, emotionally attentive, physically attentive, whatever yours is, okay? This is my choice. This is my choice. Now, I may have gone a step too far in even naming characteristics. I may have gone a step too far. I may have been better to say, I choose a romantic relationship with a man that, and that relationship is of my highest, best good and drop everything else, let everything else go because how the heck do I know? I think I know, right? I seem to be attracted to the more rugged type. That does seem to be what I'm attracted to, okay? Um, the, the brawny paper towel man comes to mind. There you go. But, but I really, I really, I have always been attracted to intelligence. What does that mean? There's all kinds of intelligences, right? My higher self knows what intelligence of which I speak. It is not, it is not a person who sits behind a desk. Okay, that's not my thing. But again, when we are putting it out into the world, and it's the same thing we do every day, all day long, right? We're constantly praying. Even if we don't know we are, we are. We're constantly putting our intention, our, our God power and intention into something. So instead of, you know, well, maybe I want him to look, because that's what I'm attracted to. So why not? It's okay. That's okay. You know, if you are attracted to a certain type of person with a certain type of, you know, some people like really thin women and that's great. Some people like women who are a little bit bigger. Some people like women that are right in the middle and the same goes with men, right? Some women like men that are built like, um, John Cena comes to mind you know, like a wrestler. Um, some women like tall, thin men, some women like whatever. 
guys that are a little huskier, a little bit more teddy bear-ish, right? And it's all good. It's all good. So when it comes down to that, yes, yes, you know what you're attracted to. But aside from that, the other characteristics, right? We have to be very careful that we're not giving those characteristics to people when they don't really have them. So we need to make sure that we are living our authentic selves so that we can align with that which truly resonates with us. Okay. And, I, you know, I thought I was doing that the whole time. I really did. I thought I was doing that. Um, but what I realize now is that there was a time in my life, uh, quite a long time, a lot of years, a lot of years, where I just really, I really loved feeling needed. I loved feeling needed. And that was enormous for me until... It didn't do it for me anymore. It didn't do it for me anymore. So, you know, I, I see how we as humans fall into these, I'm going to say traps, because that's what they seem like to me. They're kind of traps. But all of these traps can be avoided if we truly are living our authentic selves, if we really are centered in self, if we really are aligning to that higher, that higher truth, we can avoid a lot of these heartaches. In peace and love, may you be blessed.